Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's February 27, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, what do these children, 8 years old, 4 years old, and 18 months old have in common? Like other innocent people, they've been flagged as enemies of the state and put on a no-fly list. And our reporters take the info war to a Chicago secret interrogation site. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. The same administration that once told us that if you like your plan, if you like your doctor, you can keep your plan, you can keep your doctor, now brings us net neutrality. Obama thanks Americans for supporting destruction of the internet. And there's a tweet there, it says, Obama sends handwritten note to Redditors after net neutrality ruling. Obama and the federal government have bent over backwards to portray net neutrality as a win for the little guy. In fact, despite all the siren warnings about socialism and the FCC by Obama's opponents, the agency is in pocket with the telecommunications industry and always has been. Its current appointed boss, Tom Wheeler, is a former lobbyist for the cable and wireless industry with positions including president of the National Cable and Telecommunications Association and CEO of the Cellular T Telecommunications and Internet Association. The article ends by pointing out that the classic Trojan horse is net neutrality, and I cannot agree more, because they say because organizations like AT&T and Verizon are against net neutrality, obviously for the little guy, the thing that you want is the net neutrality, and I'm not a fan of AT&T or Verizon, don't let me misconstrue that at all, but you know, this is how they get in. They say they want to regulate the Internet like a public utility. And across the board, you can see people saying that, you know, this utility went up or that utility went up. And this is the same administration that said their taxes will not increase and all these other things, all these other claims. They say that they've made these choices they've made in the defense of you, the little guy. And I don't think they're looking out for the little guy at all. And more on that, it seems that people are so distracted, they can't even pay attention to what exactly is going on. And we have the article today, Obama brags about power grab while Americans debate color of address. While the Obama administration celebrates its latest power grab, the federal takeover of the internet and the ATF's unlawful ammo ban, Americans are debating the color of a woman's dress, which went viral over social media. So these are the type of things that people are distracted with. And you know, and you can have your entertainment, you can have your fun, but try to understand real things. You know, you want to laugh about the dress, you want to tweet about the dress, that's fine. But when you're done with that, and hopefully you don't spend too much time dwelling on it, you can get back to things that actually matter. And something that mattered that actually came to fruition here lately, 32,000 emails were covered in IRS targeting probe amid allegations agency chief may have lied. You guys recall Lois Lerner, who did all of her testimony with her nose stuck high up in the air, saying that she was going to invoke her right not to incriminate herself when she was called before the testimony, uh, the testimony committee. And now she's saying, uh, well, she said back then that she lost all her emails, that she had a computer crash way back when, but now... Uh, investigative agency has found out that that's not exactly the case or if it was the case they have recovered the files and do plan to look through them so we'll see exactly what exactly miss uh, Lerner had going on and if she did target these conservative agencies other agencies as well and people say well you only care because they were conservative agencies if they were targeting the girl scouts you know you should not be targeting a particular group for any political reason and that's why this is such an important story we'll bring you more as this develops and we'll end tonight with this before we go to the black site footage from Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs up there in Chicago. Emergency responders investigate possible Ebola case. Medics, firefighters, and a hazardous materials team investigated a possible case of the deadly, deadly Ebola virus in Virginia. Thursday, an official said. Emergency crews transported a patient from an apartment and they moved him to a medical center under the precautions that this person could have Ebola, said a spokesman for the county's fire department. So, you know, we'll see how this develops. Hopefully it's not anything major, but this just goes to show that there are people coming in the country that have Ebola or Ebola is being transported or transmitted through other means. Because as you recall, last year when we reported on this, myself and Joe Biggs went to a press conference and there were various people from the state of Texas, you know, UT, whatever. And one of the gentlemen jumped up there and said, hey, you know, there's no concern about Ebola. I can stick my hand in a bowl of Ebola and run around shaking people's hands. And nothing will happen. And then patient zero died and a bunch of people got sick. There's quarantines and all that. So I'm not saying this is a worldwide humanity ending epidemic. But if this is 
exactly what we say it's, it is, and there are people coming into the country with this, we definitely need to keep eyes on it and keep tabs on it so it doesn't get any worse. So something we definitely don't want to get any worse is black sites. It's been reported on by various news agencies all around the world that in the city of Chicago, there is a site that to the eye, you know, just looks like a normal building, and there are normal operations in there. You know, they went to the facility today. There are people inside the facility coming out saying, hey, I was just in there paying my traffic ticket, what have you, and that's fine and well. But we've been told, and we've seen the reports from the lawyers and other people, they say on the top floor of this place, and you can see the video, the windows are completely blacked out on the top floor, they say there's a secret site up there where people are being denied their constitutional rights, they're being tortured, or inter enhanced interrogation, whatever the buzz phrase for it is this week. And so Joe Biggs is up there with Josh Owens, our photographer. They go to the facility, they try to talk to the guard at the guard booth, he doesn't want to talk to him. The lady comes out and says, hey, you can't stand on this public sidewalk. And then a guy, which was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen, uh, drives up to him, says that he's an undercover agent, and then says, hey, don't put me on camera because I'm an undercover agent, which was just completely ridiculous. I mean, I've been out there filming live before. You have the cops come up to you or the security guard or whoever, say, hey, I don't want to be on camera. It's like, you weren't on camera before you got in front of the camera. But this guy just announces to the world that he is, in fact, an undercover agent. And honestly, I think he was just doing it to get out of work that day. Well, hell, my cover's blown. I have to go home and uh, watch, uh, watch the NFL Network. So without any further ado, we'll show you this clip of Joe Biggs up there in Chicago. Then we'll come back. We'll have more special reports. I'll give you a special gun report. We've talked a lot about the ATF and the ammo ban and the things concerning that nature. But there are also some things Diane Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, and the regular crew are up to their old tricks. We'll tell you more about that. We'll also have another special report to end the show out. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. You know, before we walk in here, I want to show you something, Alex, that is extremely hilarious because across the street, there's a bank that says Liberty Bank, freedom is here. But just across this little small street, freedom is not here. This is where they detain American citizens without reading them their rights, allowing them to contact their lawyers, just like we're supposed to be afforded as American citizens. But here, I just think it's hilarious to have a place that says freedom is here across the street, but right here. This well, is going on. You're right. The Guardian has reported that they hold people up to two days and people have died in there. I mean, imagine just being taken to a secret facility and disappeared. All right. Uh, Joe is now coming up. Uh, we're showing some footage of a secret torture training camp we found in Virginia, but let's cut back before we go to that. Let's cut back. Uh, here we are. It says, attention, no trespassing. Any unauthorized persons found in home square property are subject to arrest. Uh, Joe, let's I'm talk here. to the cop in that. In that um, yeah, right, yeah. So we've heard based off many articles that have been out in The Guardian and all this that uh, this place is. Put the mic up to the well, can you have them up, up to the, the hole. So well, why are you guys acting so secretive about this place? We're not acting. But then why can't you just just answer a few questions? And but why not though? There's nothing going on. Sir, I have nothing to say. So, but you can you guys at least admit though that you guys illegally detain people here and hold them without reading them the rights? I said if you have a question, ask you, sir. So he's refusing to talk to us, and he says that we have to go to a public affairs office, which is not even around. Oh look, people are coming out of the rat hole right there. Yeah. Go talk to them. Hey, do you guys know what's going on in here? They just hope to sweep everything under the rug. Yep. <laughs> the answer is wait till these people drive out because they yeah, don't want to be seen. Oh, there's a cop right there. Well, where? No, that's a postman. Look, he had a badge on his shirt. Maybe everything looks like that these days. Well, we're going to have Joe and our crew there uh, filing reports on all of this. And obviously, we'll just tell them because we're not doing anything wrong. They'll like everything we're doing is wrong. You guys are going to be out there surveilling them uh, from the car uh, because we're the press. That's what we do. And I'm sorry, the Guardian, the lawyers, it's all come out. People have died in there. They're torturing people. Joe, what do you make he's of— his, He's on his phone right now. He's uh, just called in, and I'm sure he's going to have people coming out any second now. Good. Uh, Joe, what do you make of the fact that police lieutenants, by name... How you guys doing? Can I talk to you real quick? Excuse me, Go sir. Do have them. any questions about what's going on here? Good, yeah, follow those police. They're Let's not as arrogant as the Chicago police usually are. <laughs> well, they're not even talking to us now. They're going in that area. Yeah, don't go on their property. Oh, no, they're bro. all looking at us now. They're all jumping in the vehicles and starting to... Scurry off? Yeah. 
Yeah, they're like piling out and leaving now, huh? They have a bunch of cockroaches. Well, most of them think they're Jack Bauer. They probably bring some really bad guys in there. It doesn't matter. You can't have secret interrogation facilities. I mean, it's one thing if the cops interrogate somebody in a car for like 30 minutes when they're driving to the police station. But, I mean, you don't sit there and take them to a black site and then hide it from the public and then people die in there. And then Joe, in fact, guys, I've got five, six articles. These aren't the ones I had highlighted. Will you highlight me, the, the cops, uh, the, the uh, police lieutenants? Go ahead. There was a lady that was held here back in uh, 2012. She was protesting the NATO summit that was happening here. And uh, they said they held her here for 18 hours. She was shackled to a bench. Uh, and the officer came up and said, I hope you guys are welcome to tour. Do what now? Uh, what's going on here? No, talk to her. Wait, wait. Stick the mic on her face. Can I ask you what's going to, on? You have to go back to home and we're public property. Okay. Okay. You're on okay. a public street, though. She can't make you leave that. Well, no, we are on their property right now. We'll walk up to the. We'll walk right up. Ask her the her name, though. Ask her her name. Ask for her identification. Okay, yeah, we will. Yeah. What's your name? You're gonna have to go all the way to home. Ask her name. Sergeant Petrina Wines. All the way back to home. In. Okay. Right now. Okay, we will. Right now. Ask her if she likes the torturing that's going on. I uh, agree with torturing people and holding them without uh, due process. Public property right now. Okay. Ask her to show you where it is. Can you show us where the sites are where you guys hold people illegally? Can no? Believe me, normally they'd be coming after you guys big time, but they don't want any attention on this, so you can well, push it pretty far. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Steve, Anyways, keep asking her questions. Um, I don't understand. Did you drive through a gate to get in there? No, Joe, no, we, didn't. we walked. We just walked over. Well, Joe, I believe that is a city sidewalk. I, I, I don't. The fence, those fences. Isn't this a city sidewalk. Isn't this a city sidewalk though? There's a bank right here though. Yeah, she's wrong, Joe. I think you should go back over to her, and and I think you should, and because because this is an attempt at violating your civil rights right now, telling you you can't be on a sidewalk. Be right here then, right? Because that's. This is what they did at the Bundy Ranch, telling people they couldn't be on sidewalks in the in the town. What if I need to go use A2? Yeah, no, what she's telling you is an illegal order. See, people no, say you must follow police order, not if they're illegal. But this is a bank sidewalk. This is a bank. Do you work for this bank? Do you work for this bank? This is a bank, though. That's their problem. Look, they're going to just keep telling you go until you're back to Austin. Okay, but I'm about to. Hey, Joe, what you need to do now is do a report with Google Maps showing that it's city, city, uh, uh, you know, right away, city sidewalks. And the headline is... We will. Gestapo tactics, secret site, police say you can't be on the sidewalk. I'm trying to walk through all this snow. I can't... Here we are, come here. Out property. Yeah, but those those city sidewalks are right of ways. They can't stop you from being just, on the city we sidewalks. Just, we, just, we just stirred their nests up. It'll be funny now. We'll see how many people they send out now. All right, Joe, let me go back to the point, and they're highlighting it for me. I covered it yesterday. The names of these police lieutenants that Rumsfeld was in control of that they would send into <laughs> Afghanistan and Iraq. How creepy is that, Joe? And describe for folks what it was like when you would deliver people for torture. Oh, it was horrible. I mean... It was funny because what they would do is they would actually uh, let, release the people that we knew were in placing IEDs and things like that. And then the interrogators, they would pick up like a farmer or something like it uh, out there in Afghanistan. And they would actually bring them back and interrogate them for no reason. It just seemed like they would do that to practice and hone their skills. And now we have that happening here, you know, on the homeland at our home turf here. What was the reason that, that uh, as best you could tell, they wouldn't go after real terrorists? Because that's what uh, Pat Tillman said and got so angry about. So they killed well, I mean, him. I mean, if there's no terrorists, we capture them all, then there's no need for them to be over there making all their money in the war. As long as we legitimize that there's monsters over there, then they can continue to run the heroin that's coming in and out of that country, the opium, and make all the money that they're after. At the end of the day, that's all they care about. Just like Vietnam, we weren't allowed to bomb Hanoi because the French and the Germans and the Chinese and everybody else were selling weapons and goods in there, including U.S. cargo. I mean, what happens, though, when you do something wrong? You start to feel paranoid. You start to feel like the people around you are going to start doing the same kind of bad things that you're doing because you have a sense of paranoia because you're always doing bad stuff. And then... Sorry to interrupt. What's up? Hey, uh, it's an undercover car. Would you mind erasing the, the part where 
I drove through just so I don't get killed when they find out. Tell him he's in a public yeah. commons yeah. and there's no perception of there's no perception of privacy. Is that another cop? Cover coming out here. Okay. Just be mindful of that yep. and uh, be safe, please. Yep. Would you mind taking that off? I'm an undercover. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a live feed. What does he think? I don't know. I don't so, think they understand technology. My God. So so this is the thing, though. Like I was saying, whenever you do something wrong like that, you start thinking that everybody no around you... No one would have even paid so attention to doing? him. He wasn't on tape till he pulled up and got in our he, camera and announced he himself just, as an undercover. Yeah, he just pulled in and pulled out and left now. So all he did was drive in here to do that, to say that. But it's like... Yeah, you know, to the say we put an undercover on TV. That's exactly... So he could come get on camera and say we did that. Yeah. So they can all feel sorry for themselves. All he did was pull and pull back. There's a guy on the telephone. Like, there's people riding up on bicycles now, staring at us in all black. It's starting to get pretty creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but like I was saying, though, whenever people start doing something wrong, eventually they think that people are going to find out. So what has our government been doing? Buying up the ammo, trying to make guns illegal. They start militarizing the police, and that's what's happening now because they know eventually – Americans are going to wake up. Like, this story breaking is huge. People in America are starting to see that everything we've been talking about for years and years of info wars is coming true. That's and right, and there's a huge the creepy... And the there's a huge creepy infrastructure right under the surface, and we're just peeling the scab off. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. Yeah, but they're starting... To, that's why they're buying all this gear, because they know an awakening is going to happen. When they do, they want to be like... They're going to be, all right, we're going to have all this gear. We'll be prepared whenever, finally, everyone starts to wake up, and that's what they're scared about. That's why they're doing all this wrong stuff. And don't forget, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Saturday, you can meet Joe Biggs and the rest of the Patriots who are going to be out there protesting this Homan Square facility. Now, as I said before, there may be some legitimate operations, people going in there, taking care of tickets and things of that nature. But on the top floor, we see the reports from lawyers, people who have been inside the facility saying, hey, there's some things going on in there that definitely should not. So be sure to be out there if you can. I don't know how long it's going to last. It's supposed to be very cold. It was 15 degrees today. I'm not sure what the temperature is going to be tomorrow. So try to be there right at 3 p.m. so you can get the full effect. Now stay tuned after this break for more special reports. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars Nightly News and PrisonPlanet.tv. This vaccine report looks at the propaganda that is used to try and scare people into getting vaccines. And I'm going to look at one person in particular. He's a time editor at large, Jeffrey Klugger. And he's the author of several books, uh, uh, numerous articles for Time Magazine based on science and human behavior and whatnot. Uh, here's a few of his articles that he's written. Let's take a look at this one. Meet the latest driver of the anti-vaccine clown car who thinks you're a bad mother. And it profiles a Dr. Jack Wolfson out of Arizona. And basically he came out and said, look, your kids should get these diseases when they're young. And they'll gain lifetime immunity, which is scientific fact that if you get these things, you will have lifetime immunity. And, and then the doctor also says things like, you shouldn't be inhaling carcinogens from detergents and stuff like that. Terrible advice to give, obviously, especially in the eyes of Mr. Kluger. And it's not just articles like these that Mr. Kluger has written. It's also a video series that he just produced for time talking about the anti-vaccine movement where he puts out health advice like this. So for the billionth time, vaccines are safe, effective and vitally important. Well, if they said it for a billion times, then it must be true. And there's definitely not any money riding on that statement. But he also said statements like these. 
If you join the Army and get a mandatory crew cut before basic training, you don't then conclude that military service causes baldness. Funny how he mentioned the Army, because back in the early 2000s, the Army was pumping up our veterans and enlisted men with tons of vaccines, including the not really tested, not really safe, not really effective anthrax vaccine. But then in 2004, judge suspends military anthrax vaccinations. For a second time in a year, federal judge ordered the military to stop requiring the anthrax vaccinations for U.S. military personnel. In response, the Pentagon halted mandatory vaccinations until further notice, but noted the court did not question the safety or effectiveness of the vaccine. Attorney Mark Zed said the anthrax vaccination program was illegal and ill-conceived from day one. Vaccines are safe, effective, and vitally important. Mr. Kluger then goes on to attack Dr. Andrew Wakefield. The narrator of a disgraceful web video spreading the rumors about the study is Andrew Wakefield the British researcher whose fraudulent 1998 paper falsely linking vaccines to autism got the entire anti-vaccine mess started. Even though, as we posted in earlier videos, that Andrew Wakefield's co-author was completely exonerated in the study, Andrew Wakefield is working on getting exonerated, and there have been many studies since then proving the link to vaccines and autism. Yet people getting advertising dollars from Big Pharma will always disagree with you, especially Mr. Kluger. Let's look at another article Mr. Kluger has written. How climate change leads to volcanoes, really? He's serious about this, and on there is a picture of a SUV driving, and in the background, a giant volcano out of Iceland is spewing forth its ash. And of course, he's correlating the fact that SUVs are causing climate change and causing more volcanoes. Just go talk to the dinosaurs about all the SUVs they used to drive and all the volcanic activity that used to happen on our planet. And you'll see there's a direct correlation between SUVs and volcanoes. <laughs> But this is where Mr. Kluger gets a little dangerous. Here's another article called Facebook Must Shut Down Anti-Vaxxers. And in this article, Mr. Kluger lays out a case for Mark Zuckerberg to actually shut down free speech for anyone that doesn't agree with the message that vaccines are safe and effective. That's right, if you don't like formaldehyde or aluminum or live vaccines, plus a numerous other agents injected into your body, then you have to be stopped on Facebook. And he ends with this. Facebook is equal parts town square, medium of communication and commercial bazaar, complete with ads, and it does all those jobs well. What the site shouldn't be is a vector for lies, especially lies that can harm children. Free speech is not in play here. This should be an easy call. And this is what you get with a lot of people on the far left. If you don't agree with their position, then you must be stopped, you must be censored. They're afraid of free and open debate. And our final piece of propaganda comes from CBS's Chicago local affiliate, where they had the article, Could Polio Make a Comeback in the U.S.? And it's complete with a video report put together by their anchor, and it's got doctors in there saying stuff like this. We have a perfect storm for polio to make a reappearance in the American scene. Someone could come from Pakistan, from Nigeria, from Afghanistan to the United States, be a carrier of the virus, and then pass it on to people who are not vaccinated. Polio could happen this afternoon, or it could happen 10 years from now. And the anchors follow up with more information on how the vaccine actually eradicated polio, even though all the charts and studies show that polio was well on its way down before the vaccine was even introduced. And so they show pictures of these rooms filled with children and young adults in these iron lungs and in braces. But as Dr. Blaylock points out in a seminar he did, this was due to this. You know, this is what they use. This, of course, this is where they collected cases from multiple states. They brought them to big centers. And so you had large numbers of these iron lungs operating, but this was people drawn from uh, 10, 15 states to this one center. But it makes a nice picture to scare the daylights out of mom, and of course she's 25 years old, so she has no concept of, of the days of the polio uh, outbreak. But that's okay because the polio vaccine's obviously safe and effective, right? Even though it admits in the insert that it's never been tested to see if it causes cancer, mutations, or impairment of fertility, and you can read it right there in the insert, 
But what's interesting about the polio vaccine was that up until the 60s, it contained the SV40 virus. And this is a virus that has been proven to cause cancer in humans, and it was taken from the kidney cells of monkeys. So up to a third of the polio vaccines up until 1961 could have contained the SV40 virus, which then gave you cancer. Vaccines are good. Governments that have been caught doing secret experiments by killing people in mass are trustworthy. So stay vigilant. The only way to combat this propaganda is to expose it at the source. This has been Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. If you are watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's your subscription to PPTV that keeps us going and keeps the InfoWar funded. Thank you once again for your support used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 And welcome back. Earlier this week, we brought you reports about how the ATF is planning gun regulations and also how Obama wants to use executive action to take your firearms away. And if you haven't seen those, you can find those reports on InfoWars.com. But those aren't the only guilty parties. We see the state of California. We'll talk about Dianne Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, and now they have a supposed partner in crime, a federal judge. California handgun roster is constitutional. And these are the words of U.S. District Judge Kimberly J. Mueller. She found this week that a handgun roster whose micro stamping requirements fundamentally stop new semi-automatic handguns from being added does not violate the Constitution. And these are firearms that are commonly sold in other parts of the country, but they say they don't want you to have these in the state of California. Now, let's move on to Feinstein and her good pal Barbara Boxer. We see this Capitol Hill gun control stalwarts want to disarm those on a watch list. And it says Senators Feinstein and Boxer are backing a measure to prevent those on government watch lists from buying guns and explosives. And they say, among other terrorist lists, they also want to include the no-fly list. And before you start clicking your keys on your YouTube comment that you think is witty, you're asking yourself, do you want terrorists to have guns? No, I'm not saying I want terrorists to have guns. I think we should stop giving terrorists guns in places like Iraq and Syria, but that's another story. But talking about this particularly, when we talk about the no-fly list, these aren't always dirty, wicked, international men of mass murder. Sometimes these are just the innocent people who get caught up by having the same name. Case in point, meet Mikey, age eight. U.S. has him on a watch list. Now, it's not Mikey himself who is a part of the watch list. He just shares the name of some supposed elusive international terrorist. Once again, you don't really know how you get on the no-fly list. You don't know how to get off of it. But you can see the boy right there. He poses no threat to me. Uh, he's a Cub Scout. Maybe he can rub some sticks together and cause a fire, but that's about it. So this is what's going on when you talk about the no-fly list and these other ambiguous, ambiguous lists, that there's also innocent people on these lists. We'll continue to move through this. We also see an 18-month-old baby yanked from a plane for being on the no-fly list. And you can see the elusive... International terrorists right there on your screen. Of course, I'm being sarcastic with that. This child poses no threat, but because the child shared a name with a supposed terrorist or at least somebody on the no-fly list, which I will reiterate again, does not make you a terrorist. It just means you somehow dinged in their system for some reason. Nobody can actually explain to you why you're on the list or how to get off of it. And we'll end our segment with this. Confusion over boy's name trips up family's journey home for the holidays. And he says, I don't want to be on the list. I want to go see my grandma, the four-year-old boy said, according to his mother. So this is for everybody who is a fan of the no-fly, no-buy list that they were talking about years ago. They said, 
If you can't fly a plane or fly on a plane, you should not be able to buy a firearm. Well, as you just saw, these were three cases of children. There are many more adults as well who have uh, a similar name to somebody who's on the no-fly list, which is to say uh, these eight-year-olds, these four-year-olds, these two-year-olds would never be able to buy a firearm. And you would say, well, somebody should have enough sense to realize that a two-year-old baby is not some elusive international terrorist. Well, shoulda, coulda, woulda, these kids still get patted down. They get denied it entry onto the planes, uh, all types of other things as well. So you can talk about what should happen. I'm telling you what does happen. And if they can mistake a child for some, you know, kill them all terrorist, what's going to happen when you want to go buy your firearm? It's completely ridiculous, and it should not happen. And this is just some of the stuff that's going on. There are many other things all around the country. Like I said earlier, we have the uh, ATF ammo bans. I think you have till March 16th. I'm going off memory to contact the ATF if you want to put in your input on that. Uh, you know, don't waste your time contacting people like Feinstein. They're already a lost cause. But if you have uh, good people in your Senate, in your city council, your sheriff, anybody you can, get a hold of them and say, hey, we want good pro-gun people here in our state. And when I say pro-gun, I'm not trying to stick a gun in everybody's hands in the United States of America. But I think if you want to defend yourself, if you want to carry a gun in your purse, if you're going to keep a gun in your car, you should be able to do that because the police cannot be there at all times to help you, to save you. And that's not a knock on the police. It's just saying, you know, a cop will show up to a, a situation. He doesn't know who the bad guy is and who the good guy is. He just sees two guys with baseball bats swinging at each other. And you don't want to be the innocent person to get shot in that situation. So you should be able to defend yourself. That's just my way of thinking about it. So when we come back, we'll have a special report. Leanne McAdoo is going to talk to Joel Scouse about how you can defend yourself by bugging out. The things you need to know if you have to leave uh, your home, or if you just want to make a more secure location for you and your family. All that's coming up right after this break. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know the fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Last summer, when OPEC couldn't agree on production curbs, we saw the price of oil plummet. That's been great for us here in the U.S. at the pump, but it's been awful for countries like Venezuela, who depend largely on oil for their exportation. Their economy has collapsed. It has free fallen into a depression. So what does that mean? Well, that means people got to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to spend six hours standing in a line just so they might be able to get the necessities like bread at a grocery store. So joining me now is Joel Skousen, editor of worldaffairsbrief.com. Now, Joel, we hear a lot about the Ukraine and Russia. Of course, the Middle East is always in the news, and we're even hearing a little bit about Africa these days. But 
with, even with something like the economy in Venezuela collapsing, people waiting six hours in a bread line there, we don't really hear very much about what's going on in Venezuela, especially with regards to this recent drop in oil prices. Can you just kind of sum up a little bit about what's going on there? Well, Venezuela is a very important country in Latin America to watch. Let me discuss the, the political and economic situation in Venezuela. Uh, there had been in past decades, perhaps 10 to 20 years ago, a robust middle class in Venezuela. It was one of the wealthiest countries, had a, a, a great deal of economic traffic with the United States, especially with uh, Miami. But that was squeezed off by Chavez. There's kind of a two-pronged approach which explains what happened in Venezuela economically. One is the increase in benefits. Uh, Chavez promised huge benefit increases uh, to people in Venezuela, and that came to pass. At the same time, he started a lot of currency controls, export-import controls, which made it very difficult for uh, Venezuelan merchants to get hold of dollars. And uh, in fact, there became a huge black market for dollars. That's one of the reasons why the Venezuela currency uh, tanked down is because of currency controls and refusal of the central bank to let them have dollars. Um, so the business sector in Venezuela has collapsed almost 60 to 70 percent in Venezuela, leaving only the oil driven welfare sector to keep people buying. And now that's in trouble because uh, the country is near bankruptcy. There isn't enough money uh, to pay for the welfare sector. Therefore, consumer spending is dropping tremendously. And um, that's why you have a, a really free fall economy going on. Nurses say that they've seen people die on the operating table because things like just the basic supplies needed for surgery weren't able to be there. Stores can't stock things like bread and milk and detergent on the shelves. One mother had to bring proof of a birth certificate to the grocery store just so she could buy diapers for her newborn. You might think if you go down there, you could live like kings because things like a, a tube of toothpaste only cost seven cents. But when you consider the fact that people there are making about $30 a month, that is extreme prices for people. They are on the verge of economic collapse. Uh, the uh, the economy isn't working. They can't get foreign exchange. Uh, they, uh, the businessmen can't trade. There are no products or very few products coming into the country. A black market is starting to um, uh, occur there, and violence is precluding a lot of people from being able to trade in the cities. And so it looks very, very bleak for Venezuela. As I said, I expect they're going to need a bailout from Russia and China, and uh, the U.S. is probably going to try to just let it fall. Mm. Yeah. And so are we watching as the Western powers are just sort of sitting back and allowing this dictatorship to assume itself and almost dig its own grave, like they're kind of just sitting back and allowing this to happen, knowing that it's doomed to fail? Well, we have to remember, that's a little complex answer that I can give here. Remember that the United States has a history of installing communist regimes. They purposely installed Castro in Cuba by undermining Batista. They installed the Sandinistas in neighboring Nicaragua by undermining Somoza, uh, who was a very pro-Western and uh, progressive uh, president there. They brought the communists to power in Laos and Cambodia, Red China, uh, Soviet Union, uh, Suriname, many other places. Now, they did overthrow a couple of communist countries, one in Guatemala under Arbenz, and also in Chile uh, under Allende. And uh, both of those were by influencing the local military to perform a coup. And as I say, they foreclosed that. Um, but remember those last two overthrows in Guatemala and Chile happened when there was still an anti-communist cadre within the CIA under James Jesus Angleton. Those anti-communists in the CIA have been totally purged now. You'd never see a Bay of Pigs uh, um, type uh, revolution mounted. The one against the Sandinistas in the Contras was sabotaged because of drug dealing of the CIA, was never intended to be successful, and in fact was not successful. So I don't perceive that there really is an anti-communist faction who's interested in overthrowing Chavez or Maduro 
in the State Department. So recently, the president of Venezuela has come out and said that the that there is a coup plot being backed by the White House. Is there any truth to that? Obviously, the State Department immediately came out and said that that was just the president blaming uh, his own failed policies on the West. Is What do you think? My information from Venezuela is that there is U.S. influence in the opposition uh, they are using, for example, there's a Serbian outfit called Canvas that has uh, been providing uh, tactical and strategic ideas, but ideas only, uh, to the opposition. Uh, there are no effective deliveries of arms or large amounts of funds sufficiently to cause a coup or a, uh, an armed resistance. Uh, there has only been private funds. I mean, sorry, there are some um, democracy funds that the U.S. does give, but a token amount, certainly not enough to cause the overthrow. Um, really what it would take and what it always takes to overthrow a, a communist tyranny is to get money to military officers within the Venezuelan military to run a coup. But Chavez foreclosed that many years ago by purging all of the right-wing officers from the Venezuelan military. So you only have left-wing pro-Chavez type officers. There's virtually no way that the U.S. can buy a coup. Uh, the, the nation is essentially disarmed. I don't think a coup is possible in this regard. You have a typical communist government that controls all the arms and has a lock on the military right now. So we know that historically the globalists have set up these type of communist dictatorships in the past to do their bidding all over the world. Those dictatorships are then very easily toppled when the time is right. The globalists have not attempted to overthrow many of these corrupt and communist regimes because they're basically setting up the facility in the world for this third world war, which is going to be between Russia and China and the West. And they want to. They don't want to undermine the the backers of Russia and China now. They will at some future time. But I think you're going to see most of these countries in Latin America go towards Russia and China in the next war. I think the expatriates that have moved there are going to be in a very sad state. That's why I don't recommend that for strategic relocation. Uh, but ultimately. Russia and China are playing their cards. They're planning on using Cuba still. Uh, Russia's back in there with their spying and does have some missiles in the country. Uh, I suspect that eventually Venezuela will, uh, if it continues, will house some missiles. I do expect China and Russia to try to bail out Venezuela if it needs it. They don't want to lose it, to be sure. This is historically the type of failure that we have seen with socialist and communist policies food rationing, bread lines, famine. We might be witnessing the next large-scale exodus out of Venezuela, yet most Americans are completely oblivious to what those excellent gas prices actually mean for the other side of the world. So whether or not it's being engineered or if they're just allowing this communist tyranny to develop, we can see that Venezuela is ripe for globalist exploitation. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.